Georgia Democrat Raphael Warnock has won a full six-year term in the U.S. Senate. And the U.S. Supreme Court hears arguments today in a case that could radically reshape federal elections. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. The last undecided Senate race of this year's midterm election has been settled. NPR's Giles Snyder says Georgia voters are sending Democrat Raphael Warnock back to Washington. Senator Warnock's narrow victory over Republican challenger Herschel Walker means Democrats will head into the next Congress with more room to maneuver in the Senate. They'll have an outright majority with 51 seats. This victory is Warnock's second runoff win in as many years, and it's another loss for candidates endorsed by former President Donald Trump. NPR as Giles Snyder reporting. The U.S. Supreme Court hears arguments today in a case that could radically reshape the way federal elections are conducted. NPR's Nina Totenberg reports. At issue is the so-called independent state legislature theory, which, if adopted by the Supreme Court, would give state legislatures the power to put in place all manner of election laws and rules without any review by state courts. At its most extreme, the theory could eliminate not just state judicial power over elections, but governor's vetoes. And it might, at least arguably, allow state legislatures to certify presidential electors who were not approved by the voters, an idea that Donald Trump sought unsuccessfully to put forth in 2020. Nina Totenberg, NPR News, Washington. More than 35,000 electricity customers are still in the dark in central North Carolina. Utility company Duke Energy says it's working rapidly to repair two substations that were damaged after vandals fired on them last Saturday. Duke Energy hopes to restore power to most people tonight. The FBI is part of the investigation into the attack on the substations. The White House is hosting a roundtable on the rise of anti-Semitism and on fighting hate in the U.S. NPR's Franco Ordonez reports Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff will lead the discussion today with Jewish leaders. The meeting comes after a surge of anti-Jewish comments from prominent people, including the rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, in a dinner between former President Donald Trump, Ye, and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes. Emhoff is the first Jewish person in his position. Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, says he takes the matter personally. He has said himself that he is in pain uh, and that this is something we cannot normalize. President Biden raised his own concerns last week when he called out political leaders on Twitter for not strongly denouncing anti-Semitism. He said silence is complicity. Franco Ordonez. NPR News. Today is Pearl Harbor Day. 81 years ago today, Japan attacked the U.S. military base in Hawaii and the U.S. entered World War II. President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared this a date which will live in infamy. Today in Washington, D.C., observers will lay wreaths at the World War II Memorial. You're listening to NPR News.